begin reading in uh, verse uh, 20, Luke chapter 21. I'll share a message of how we consider the days. And um, as you're opening your Bible up there, remember next Sunday afternoon at 5.15 is our VBS workers meeting uh, to give you an update where we're at, what, what you're going uh, to uh, be able to expect when we have VBS in July. And so if you're signed up, or even if you're not signed up, if you want to be able to help out, be sure to be there at that meeting. Uh, it be a very important initial meeting to get you focused and going in the right direction. And certainly take time to stop by in the foyer and sign up for our couples retreat, which is in October. And uh, I know the Lord will bless you as you take part in all these things that are going on. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20 says, uh, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries uh, enter thereinto. Uh, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. <laughs> But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem <coughs> shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves a roaring, uh, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be together this morning. Uh, Lord, this timely subject and topic, Lord, of Bible prophecy, uh, help us, Lord, to be able to discern the days in which we're living in. Uh, help us to be able to be stirred this morning. Uh, with a sense of urgency that the hour is drawing near of the return of Christ. And uh, Lord, it, it behooves us as believers in Christ uh, to rise up and be a mighty voice in the world uh, proclaiming the good news that not only did Jesus come, but he's coming again. And all peoples need to be saved. They need to be born again. And so, Lord, I pray that you just bless the preaching of the Word of God this morning. I would pray if there's someone watching live stream, someone here in the building, uh, Lord, that they would be touched uh, by the truths of what the future holds. And, Lord, they would realize uh, the judge of all the earth is a God of grace and mercy, and they can be gloriously saved today. And so I pray, Holy Spirit of God, fill me. With your power, speak through me. Be our teacher and our guide in scriptures. And Lord, I pray that Jesus Christ will be exalted in everything that will be said and done. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our text verse is verse 20. It says, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. I've been praying for the last several weeks about preaching on prophecy. And the Lord had directed me to this passage, and then everything started happening this week yep. uh, with Israel. It's like, wow, you talk about a timely message uh, that uh, it lines right in with what uh, is going on in our world. And uh, certainly when we talk about Bible prophecy, uh, we need to be aware of the fact no man can point the time, day, or hour that Jesus Christ will return. But we certainly can look at the days in which we live, consider the days. And uh, if you see things that are prophesied in the scripture that are going to take place, and you see them taking place before your eyes, that means the return of Christ is upon us. And uh, we need to be have a sense of urgency about us, uh, and we need to be ready to reveal these truths to others and to be able to help folks come 
to faith in Christ. I, I heard a thing yesterday on the radio, on Christian radio, and I was going to make some calls and was going my way to uh, Jersey Shore Hospital, and, and I was listening to the radio, Christian radio, and they were saying about people leaving the church. And it used to be we talked about people leaving the church, but they're talking about people leaving the church loud. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I never heard tell this before. And so I was listening to it, and really, it, it's in a nutshell, is about people being vocal and bold about not just leaving the church, but leaving their faith in Jesus Christ. And they're not being silent about it. They are aggressively telling everybody else that they need to leave Christ also. Strange days in which we're living Amen. in. Uh, you know, in Luke chapter 18 and verse 8, Jesus said this, and it's up on the screen for you. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. I've always been puzzled by that statement over throughout my life as a Christian. But I tell you, the longer that I live, the longer I've been saved, I'm, I'm really starting to understand that verse because the aggressive nature, the denying the reality of who Christ is, the disregard for Scripture, not just among the unsaved, but among the saved, Amen. I have to start questioning and saying, when Jesus comes, will you find faith on the earth? Right. And so it is so important for us to understand prophetically, we're watching a complete disconnect with the church and a complete disregard for truth. Amen. And so we, we need to be aware of the signs of the times or be aware, if you will, of the days in which we live. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 4, and it's up on the screen for you, it says, And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And people have become very skeptic about the Bible, about faith in Christ, about the reality of the return of Christ. Uh, it's been going on for years. You've preached on this for years, and, uh, you know, it hasn't happened yet, so why should I worry about it now? Well, because of the fact of what we see going on in the days in which we live, it shows that Jesus Christ is about to return, and we need to be ready. People think they can live as they please, and they're never going to face God. But every one of us are going to have to give an account before the Lord. And we know that Jesus Christ is coming again, first of all, in reference to the rapture. <clears throat> and just looking at the news media, how they redefine everything and put their spin on everything that's reported. I just wonder how they're going to spin it when the rapture takes oh, place. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when the trump of God sounds and we're raptured and caught up in the glory and thousands upon thousands of believers in Christ all of a sudden disappear. Amen. I wonder how in the world that's going to take place. I, I was talking to someone yesterday, and they told me, you know, I was watching this program, and they were talking about the reason why in the Old Testament people couldn't open up the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant, and look inside was because of the fact that aliens had put a radioactive <laughs> charge in there. And that the cherubims, as they are over top of the Ark of the Covenant, if you tried to get open the lid or whatever, the electric charge would come out and slap you. And I was like, are you kidding me? I, I've heard some strange things before. But do you realize how many people will believe that garbage? Yeah. Yeah. And the days in which we're living in, we know Jesus is Christ, Christ is coming again. We need to be ready. Notice in verse 20, there is a great warning. Because he says, when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. That's a great warning that he gives. But then as you read through the chapter where I read, we ended on verse 28. Verse 28 is a great promise. He says this, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And so in the passage, we start out with a great warning, but it concludes with a great promise. And uh, you can just look at Bible prophecy as being something that is negative and look at something that just is discouraging when you consider the world and fulfillment of prophecy 
Uh, but the reality is, God always gives a warning and follows up with a promise. Amen. Amen. And we live in light of the promises of God. And, but we acknowledge the warnings that he has given out. So first of all, I want to just consider this. In verse 22 of our text, it says, For these be the days of vengeance, and all things which are written may be fulfilled. And so I see, first of all, there's a disdain for Israel. And we're seeing it in our world right now with what's going on in Israel. We're seeing it in our country. Uh, we're seeing it around the world, a disdain for Israel. Uh, verse 20, just it, uh, the news this week fulfills verse 20 to a point of Israel. I saw an article I read, it said, Israel on brink of war. And so Israel is right on the brink of war uh, with this conflict with Hamas and the Palestinians uh, right now over uh, Jerusalem. And uh, uh, it is getting hot and heavy over there. Uh, it's not getting any better, it seems. Uh, Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 2, and I have it on the screen for you, it says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. And when they shall be in, sie in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And so, yes, pro prophecy speaks of the fact of the nations of the world and peoples of the world coming against Israel to try to remove them from the face of the soil. You know, it's interesting that Israel is about the size of the state of New Jersey. And all these huge, massive countries all the way around them, they're surrounded by people who hate them and who want to annihilate them. And so we see that Israel on the brink of war fulfills Bible prophecy. You know, on uh, the other day, on Jerusalem Day, just to give you some background of what's going on here, on Jerusalem Day, which was a celebration of 1967 war, when Israel took possession of the old city of Jerusalem, uh, on that day, uh, literally Hamas sent uh, rioters in to start riots. I saw pictures of uh, uh, men of, from uh, Hamas uh, in the temple. They went to the temple supposedly to pray, but they carried bags of rocks with them. And it was for the purpose of setting up this attack to cause a riot, they knowing that the Israeli police will come in and stop it from taking place. This is all over the fact that there's four families Palestinian families uh, living in East Jerusalem uh, that were evicted from their house because they've been living there for years, not paying any rent. There's been several court cases and this, that, and the other. And finally, the ruling was they had to be evicted. And when they were evicted, uh, the response was, well, Israel won't let Palestinians live in that area, when in reality, there's Palestinians living all the way through that area. Amen. And so it was a false narrative that created an aggressive attack that created a riot on the Temple Mount, and Israeli police took a part in that to try to bring calm and to end it. And so as a result of that, Hamas over the next 36 hours would fire, Hamas would fire 50, over 1,500 rockets into Israel. Uh, they fired at one point 135 rockets in five minutes. And they did that for the express purpose of testing Israel's Iron Dome defense system to see how many rockets they can fire to overcome that to be able to get through to be able to hit people in Israel. And uh, actually the Iron Dome uh, hit and prevented 90% of the rockets that were fired at the, uh, them uh, from hitting anything. It took them out. Uh, Hamas is using suicide drones uh, to attack Israel that are supplied by Iran. Uh, Iran uh, gives Hamas $30 million a month uh, to be able to have their weapons, to be able to have their attacks, their skills, and their uh, fortresses, if you will, uh, to fight against Israel. The interesting thing is Hamas sets up their rocket launchers in the midst of civilians. 
and uh, people are upset with Israel because they're civilians that have died. It's because they, when they hit a military target of Hamas, it's, it's shielded. They shield themselves by women and children. That's right. And uh, so that causes, and the interesting thing is, is Israel it notifies them that they're getting ready to fire rockets in. And uh, so they can run. The Israel's average time to be able to get in a shelter when their alarm system goes off is about anywhere from a half a minute to a minute and a half. Oh, wow. Once the alarm goes off. Uh, Hamas controls Gaza. And Hezbollah controls Lebanon. And Hezbollah boasts that it has 150,000 rockets. And so you have Hezbollah, you have Hamas, you have Syria, all surrounding Israel, backed by Iran, uh, and they set up this attack. And so Israel protects itself with its iron uh, dome uh, defense system. Uh, here's a couple of shocking things, some of the responses of people in the world in reference to what's going on with Israel. Uh, the UN Secretary said this, Israeli security forces must exercise maximum restraint and calculate their use of force. Okay, you're getting, how would you feel if Pennsylvania, all of a sudden Pennsylvania and New York, started firing 1,500 missiles in 36 hours onto New Jersey. Are you going to practice restraint? Are you going to say, well, we just need to get along? Or what is it that you want? We'll give it all to you. It's just ludicrous. The White House here in the United States, President Biden, uh, said that Israel has a legitimate right to defend itself. However, he followed up with a statement, but... They must be a place of coexistence. And so I think it's kind of interesting how, you, how you're going to do both things. Yeah, that's right. And um, then uh, EU foreign policy chief also condemned the evictions of Palestinian families from East Jerusalem. They were evicted because they didn't pay rent. Amen. They were evicted because they don't own the property. They were evicted because there had been court cases concerning this for years. And finally, it says you're a baby. Uh, Arab League response, Arab League's chief said this, Israeli airstrikes were indiscriminate and irresponsible. He said Israel was responsible for a dangerous escalation. Uh, okay, you say so. Uh, Iran, Iranian Supreme Leader said Zionists understand nothing but the language of force. So the Palestinians must increase their power and resistance to force the criminals to surrender and stop their brutal acts. World sentiments. Uh, Vladimir Putin, Russia, said this. He called on the parties to de-escalate de-escalate tensions and peacefully resolve the emerging issues. Turkey said this, the Israeli government must finally understand that it will not be able to suppress the Palestinian people's legal rights and demands by using indiscriminate and disproportionate power. And the Organization of Islamic Cooperation praised the steadfastness of the Palestinian people uh, sanctioned in the occupied city of Jerusalem and their response to Israeli attacks on the holy sites. Here in the United States yesterday, there were all kind of protests. I've never seen this in the year of 68 years, 69 years <laughs> that I've been alive. I have never seen our streets flooded with people protesting in support of the Palestinians and against Israel. I've never seen that. And it's pretty sad when we have a congresswoman, several congresswomen, vocally coming out and supporting the protesters in support of Palestine rather than support of Israel. That, that is a conflict of interest. Amen. You're supposed to be leading and directing our country 
and keeping us safe and, and our allies you're supposed to be supportive of. That's right. And so there is something wrong with this whole situation. What is the problem? There's a disdain for Israel. Notice prophecy in verse 25 and 26, there's a distress of nations. Notice in verse 25, it says, There shall be signs of the sun, the moon, and the stars upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So not only is there a disdain for Israel, but there's a distress of the nations. Uh, first of all, think of this. There is a global fear. And verse 26 says, men's hearts failing them for fear. That's talking about globally. All men will be fearing. And I just thought of this. Uh, the death by COVID-19 has created fear among all people in the nations around the world. Uh, the things that have gone he on here in America. The reality is this. In 2020, the number one killer in the United States of America was heart attack. It was not COVID-19. Matter of fact, if you got COVID-19, you had a 99%, 99.3% uh, chance that you're going to survive. But uh, number one killer in America was heart attack. Number two killer in America in 2020 was cancer. And number three killer that caused death in America was COVID-19. Uh, the interesting thing is, and nobody will report this, but in 2020, 13,000 people in America died of AIDS. I remember when HIV started coming out years ago, uh, everybody was worried about HIV, you know, blossoming into AIDS, which was deadly. It was a death sentence on you. And I remember when that took place, you are not allowed to ask anybody if they have H HIV. Amen. Amen. I remember reading information on HIV for New Jersey and they said, uh, based on the size of New Jersey and the size of our church, that most likely you would have at least one or two people in your church that have HIV. That was back in 2000, around that time period. But you are not allowed to ask them if they've been tested for HIV. It seems as though with COVID-19, we've thrown out all those prophecy, all those HIPAA laws out the window. And now you have to prove your health, and now you have to declare whether you had a vaccine, whether you haven't had a vaccine. And listen, it is nobody's right to know my health issue. Amen. Amen. And it is time for Americans to stand up and say, I understand prophetically men will fear through the world but I'm not going to allow disease, sickness, oppression, and all these things to come to a point where I give up my rights as a human being. I give up my rights as a U.S. citizen. So fear. There's fear because of persecution of Christians. Iran, Iranian Christians are imprisoned. Colombian pastors are assassinated. Nepal, if you talk about your faith, you'll be sent to prison. In India, believers are beaten. In Finland, uh, Christians face up to six years in prison for tweeting Bible verses about marriage. In the UK, a street preacher was arrested for preaching on marriage according to the scriptures. In Canada, pastors are being arrested and thrown in the jail for one reason, for opening up their church. Fear gripping the hearts of people because of persecution of Christians. You say, well, well how do we deal with it? Uh, you don't fear. God's not giving us a spirit of fear. We don't live in fear. We know this is going to go on. We understand persecution. We know what prophecy declares. And so we're going to hold on to the promise that God has given us, irregardless of, or, irregardless of what goes on. 
So we see persecution of Christians, global fear. I see global confusion. Because it says in verse 26, it says men's hearts are failing them for fear and looking for those, looking after those things which are coming on the earth, the powers of heaven are shaken. And so he talks about looking at the things that are on the earth and what is coming, there's confusion in the world. Here's a few thoughts. China, uh, they say that China is our biggest threat in the world right now. Financially, militarily, uh, whatever, I forget the other one they said, but anyway, they're our biggest threat. China, here's some news article headlines. China threatens Australia with ballistic missile strike. Uh, China claims the South China Sea is their own. Uh, China is looking to take Taiwan. <coughs> The question that comes up, would the U.S. be able to defend Taiwan if China decided to do so? And the report is that we would. Uh, China has threatened Japan and Vietnam. China warned the United States, don't cross the red line. Uh, COVID-19 began in China. Nobody's allowed to say that. But it began in China. This COVID-19 came out of China. Yeah. And you understand what COVID-19 is. They were experimenting on viruses that animals have that do not affect human beings. But they soup the virus up. So that now human beings are subject to the virus. And on the guys that they want to figure out how they can stand against or fight against a biological warfare type of thing. But somebody let the cat out of the bag and it's, it spread across the world. Now listen, there are 11 labs like that in the United States right now doing that very same thing. We're going to kill ourselves. Well, I've got to keep moving on. Russia. Russia has 80,000 troops on the border of Ukraine. Russia has made a warning to the United States, do not cross the red line. America is looking at two major world powers, Russia and China, both that have made threats to the United States, don't you mess with us. It's the world that we're living in. Question comes up in reference to Ukraine. Would U.S. be willing to go to war with Russia on behalf of the Ukraine? These are real issues in real time that we're dealing with right now. The United States is a divided society. Uh, we're divided uh, over critical race theory uh, that has been put into our schools, trying to be put into schools. A lot of parents have risen up and gone against the school boards and have demanded and to get rid of it. Uh, it. It just in simplistic terms, I literally through critical race theory, now men and women, boys and girls are judged based on their color of their skin. Now I thought that's what we fought for for all these years, that we don't judge people based on the color of their skin. It is a racist curriculum designed to manipulate and control our children. Amen. And parents, you got your kids in school, you better go to the school board meetings and you better find out what they're teaching your kids. That's right. We're a divided society over critical race theory. We're a divided society over COVID-19, vaccines and masks. People are leaving churches over the mask issue. The church doesn't want to enforce masks, they leave the church. If the church does enforce the mask, they leave the church. Uh, if you get vaccinations, vaccines, uh, well, that's wonderful, but I don't want to be around people that believe that I'm leaving the church. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an alarming uh, thing that's going on, face mask mandates, forced compliance. That's what it comes down to, forced compliance. I'm not against masks. I'm not against vaccines. 
I'm not against any of those things. But I am against forced compliance. Amen. In uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16, it says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Do I believe the vaccine is the, uh, 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 the mark of the beast? No. That'd be foolish to think that. The problem is not the vaccine or the lack of it. The problem is, is the attitude of the people in America where we, we have submitted and surrendered ourselves to be manipulated like sheep being led to the slaughter. And that is the spirit and the character of the Antichrist. And so, I don't know about you, they're not going to tell me what this is. Free speech. Amen. Free speech is being... Uh, hindered uh, by and limited by big tech. I never thought in my lifetime that I would see huge businesses dictate the narrative that we can talk about. I never thought I'd see huge businesses being able to manipulate the news media and to be able to tell somebody, if you don't believe what I believe and you don't talk like I want you to talk, you can't work here anymore. But that's a part of the character of the last days. Uh, they're teaching our children not only cr a critical race theory, but homosexuality, transgenderism in our schools. It is horrible. Government, I heard this coming out of the Biden administration. The government wants to add two grades, two years at the bottom of the scale, and two years at the top of the scale. They want your kids from three years old to 20 years old to be in their schools. Now, I wonder how long it's going to be before they start pushing that in front of the house. You say, well, why would they do that? It is all about control. We're, we're in America. We're free. We're, we have freedom to, to worship God as we please. We have freedom to go from one place to another without wearing a tag to say, oh, I've been vaccinated. We are free to believe what we want to believe, do what we want to go, do, go where we want to go. We're, we're free people. Amen. Why will we give it up for this foolishness? Amen. Uh, there is a, I read an article the other day. It's called Purging of the Defense Department by Leftists. It said there's an article out. It's called Patriot Extremism. If you're in the military and you believe this, they're getting rid of you. Pa uh, pa patriot extremism is this ideology holds that the U.S. government has become corrupt. Amen. Uh, has overstepped its constitutional boundaries. Amen. Or is no longer capable of protecting the people against foreign threats. Amen. Amen. But be it known to this, that there is a purging going on in the Defense Department that's getting rid of people that hold that patriotic position. Because it's extremism. Well, i got to hurry up. Our nuclear weapons that we have here in America date back to the 1970s. Russia's nuclear weapons, by the end of this year, will be 88% modernized. Uh, there's a new axis of evil. There were three meetings that were so important and nobody said anything about it on the first week of April. Three meetings. Number one, or letter A, I guess it is, Russia and China foreign ministers met together and their discussion and their evaluation was both of them are attacking U.S. Russia and China. Why are you, you touching them? Ezekiel chapter 38, chapter 39 deals with the war that's going to be against the Magog and Magog wars that will be against Israel. And it's all in reference to, it's Gog and Magog, it's China, it's Russia, it's Iran, um, it's Syria, it's Lebanon. China and Islamic fascists of Iran 
met that week also, and they promised economic, economic cooperation together. And then the third meeting was Russian military bosses met with the military dictator of uh, Myanmar, uh, and listen, the military dictator of Myanmar was the one who shot to death those uh, democracy protesters in his country. He shot them to death, executed them. Uh, global climate. It says here that the powers on the earth and shall be shaken. It says in verse 25, there are signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. And uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12 says, looking forward and hastening unto the coming of the great, uh, uh, coming of the day of God, where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I'm not a big climate change guy and all this, that, and the other, but I can tell you this. I was doing some research on this about towns that live along the shore area, towns in different areas around the country, and the water is rising. You can say, no, that's right. It ain't going to happen. It is rising. I was looking at one, one city down in, uh, right off the Chesapeake. And they were showing it, they just, and everybody who lives there is saying, yeah, the, you know, we, we drive through water all the time because the water's getting higher and higher. We don't know what we're going to do. There is climate changing going on. But the ultimate thing is when Jesus Christ comes again, there's going to, everything's going to melt with a fervent heat. Yeah. You talk about climate change, you talk about global warming, it's going to get hot real fast. <laughs> So I see this passage when we consider today is we understand there's a disdain for Israel and there's a distress of the nations. Yeah. And then the last thing is this. There's a determined redemption. Notice in verse 27 is then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Yeah. Determined yeah. redemption. What is that based on? The king is coming. Amen. Amen. When you see these things, we don't get overwhelmed with fear. We don't become distressed. Uh, we don't feel like everything's coming to an end. It is coming to an end. But Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen. 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 So we have something better we're looking for. Notice, first of all, it says here uh, that he's coming. He's the almighty. He's coming in power. And so he is the almighty. In uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Never forget that, that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, has all power committed to him. Amen. In other words, there's no one else has greater power than he does. And then realize this, he's extraordinary. It says, so, uh, in our verse here, it says, When these things uh, begin to come to pass, look up. And lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Uh, he is extraordinary. He is great in his power. Verse 27 tells us you'll see the sun coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And so he's extraordinary. The word great means extraordinary. Psalm 113.5 says, Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? And so never forget, there is no religious leader, no God, there's no individual, there's nobody that meets the character and quality and power and grace and mercy in all that Jesus Christ is. He comes in great glory. And then he's not only uh, almighty and extraordinary, but he's full of glory because it says he comes in glory, glory in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8 says, Who, having not seen ye love, in whom, though ye now, uh, ye now see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So our rejoicing is full of glory because we rejoice in the Lord our God. Amen. We don't rejoice in what goes on in the world. We don't rejoice with the troubled times in which we're facing. We rejoice in the fact that Jesus Christ is full of glory Hallelujah. and he's coming again as he said he would so the king is coming i see a determined redemption because the believer is watching notice in verse 28 it says when you these things begin to come to pass then look up and so these things begin there's information 
believer is watching because he gathers information. The believer doesn't hide, doesn't ignore the signs of the times or the situations in life. The believer looks up. He wants to get information to know this is why this is happening. People have questions. People need answers. And you need to be able to say, this is why this is going on, and this is why this is happening. And the Bible tells us this is going to take place. You need to be able to communicate information from the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> then there's direction. He says, look up. We don't look to the world as for our needs and for our help. Uh, we look to the Lord. I was talking with someone yesterday, and we were talking, they were saying they were having a hard time about having faith and believing in God and all this, that, and the other. And, and I told them, I said, faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. I said, when you pray, because God tells us to pray, that he'll, he informed us that he would hear our cries, we do that when we have no understanding of how it's going to come to pass. We do that because our direction is not looking to individuals and man to try to meet our needs. We look to God and he hears our cry and he responds to us. Amen. Amen. So the believer in his watching the world that's going on and watching for the return of Christ knows where we're looking. We're looking up. Amen. Not looking down here. Amen. And then I see the disposition. He says, lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Your disposition. The believer is watching. In other words, we don't walk away around. Oh, I just wish it was like it was years ago. I just, I just wish we didn't have all these problems we have to deal with. Lift up your head. Don't, don't walk around like this and drag your lip. Lift up your head. I, I see our kids in our school sometimes. They're walking through school and they're walking. No, drag. I feel like going over there and say, "Hey, stand up." You go. Pick up your head. If I did that, some parent would drop dead. I guarantee you. But we see Christians all the time. They're walking around, dragging their lip. They're acting like they're defeated. They're so discouraged. They're so out of control. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ is coming again. If he's coming again, then look up and lift up your head. Why? Because your redemption draws God. So the king is coming, the believer is watching, and then I see redemption is satisfying. <laughs> it says, for your redemption draweth nigh. I notice it's personal, it's satisfying because it's personal. It says, your. I'm glad that you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, but I'm more glad I am. It's personal. And I know this, that when Jesus Christ comes again, he's coming for me. That's right. He may be coming for you, but he's, I'm more important for him to come to me. <laughs> and so we see the redemption is satisfying, it's personal, it's practical. Because the word redemption means the ransom has been paid. Amen. There is nothing I have to bring before the Lord to justify being in his presence because he shed his blood on Calvary. Right. And because he shed his blood on Calvary, then everything's all right in my Father's Amen. house. Amen. Very practical. And then I see it's permanent. It says it draweth nigh. In other words, when you experience it, it's going to be with you. It's not going to leave you. But rather, you're going to enjoy the presence of God. And so consider the days in which we're living in. When we see, I couldn't believe the news when it, this whole thing went down with Israel. Because I had read that verse. When you see, when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies. And I turned on a news clip and I was like, wow, this goes right with my message. Real-time news in reference to real-time Bible prophecy. And I want you to know this, that everything we're watching, we're hearing, we're experiencing is pointing to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again. Don't forget the King is coming. As a believer, I'm watching. Amen. And certainly, my, the redemption of God is satisfying to my soul. Amen. Well, let's bow for a moment. God, thank you so much for the time to study this morning. Went through a lot of issues, a lot of facts, a lot of numbers, a lot of situations. But God, we know this. In the end, you're greater than them all. Uh, Lord, we, our success, our safety 
is not based on what's going on in the world, but it's based on who our God is. Amen. And so, Lord, bless us. Help us to have faith to believe that God is greater than these things. I pray if there's someone's not saved, I pray in this invitation it would come, and we can show them from the Bible how to be saved today. And so bless us in this invitation, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing a song of invitation, just as I am, let's stand and sing. If you're watching my live stream and you need somebody to talk to you, email us, or give us a call, whatever. We'd be glad to talk to you about salvation, and uh, Jesus Christ is coming. Is he going to come for you? And he said, all that come unto me, I will no wise cast out. So you can come to faith in Christ and knowing this, Jesus may come, the trumpet may sound today, Amen. but you'll be in glory. Amen. Amen. Let's sing just as I am. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for being here this morning.